Okay, so I'm working on the intake for the Turbo Vortec 4200 six-speed manual Volvo project thing. And some of it's going well, some of it I had some challenges with. And I was planning on making this one video, but I think I'm gonna split it up a little bit. So I do have the intake flange made out of the aluminum, but the challenge with this 2JZ adapter is how far the front and rear runner has to come in. So it's really difficult to do it with a two-inch tube. So what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting the whole bottom section out. That's why I welded these plates in there so I can take a hole saw and I welded that plate in so I can actually have something to drill into. And then I'm going to use a four inch hole saw, just cut some big holes because of this radius here. And then I'm going to cut this whole thing out. But as I was working on that stuff, I started thinking about velocity stacks and kind of got sucked into that for like three days. Well, a little bit of dorking around, I have this thing here now. And it was originally like this, and you saw me drilling the holes in it. So my plan originally was to make these little velocity stacks. I was going to round off the top and then just press the outer sides out of it. And that wasn't really working really well at all. So what I decided to do was take that center section that I drilled out and then trim all the way around the other outside of it here so I could pop that piece out of it. And what I ended up doing was making this little, I don't know, die, I guess you could call it, on the lathe so it could actually press the aluminum out. And this is what it looks like pulling out of it. So this is all rounded over. And this is the one that I made last night, just on the press. So I'll actually make one, show you how I did it. I put this piece on the lathe and then heat it up with the torch and then put some WD-40 on this and then put this in the press and just smash it down and then this is the piece that I got out of it exactly like this. So that works pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is marking this with a sharpie inside and outside and then I'm going to hit it with the propane torch. This is called annealing, so I'm basically just going to heat it up until the black sharpie mark goes away. Uh, seen a couple videos about this, so I tried it and it worked pretty well. So what I'm going to do is turn the lathe on a low speed. You wouldn't need to use a lathe on this, but I'm just I'm just using the lathe because I have it and. It's just a way for me to apply the heat evenly to it.
So this will heat up. This takes a couple minutes. And what this is going to do, it's going to soften the metal so it doesn't crack when it separates. Uh, I tried to do one without doing this annealing process and it split it probably 10 different times. So you can see that Sharpie mark is starting to fade away a little bit. The one on the inside is gone in some spots. And before I put... And before I did this, I did measure the piece at... I cut it at about 1.7 inches. And then I put it on the lathe and I flattened each end of it because I cut it with the bandsaw so it was a little wavy. I flattened each one of them so they're, they're flat on both ends. And then it ended up at about 1.64 inches long. So now you can see that mark on the inside is gone. There's no more Sharpie on the inside or outside. But I'm just going to run this a little bit longer. This is what I was doing with the last ones and it seemed like it worked pretty well. And then after this, I'll take it over to the press and we'll press it. All right, so this one I did let, a cool, let cool a little bit longer and I'm gonna try assembly lube, like engine assembly lube on here instead of the um, PB blaster shooting that all over the place. Uh, so it is a little bit warm yet. It's not too hot. I don't think it's as hot as the other one. So we'll see. Oh, this one works if this is was scrunched because it's still warm. I think the first one I did was a little bit cooler. Sit a little bit. All right. Yeah, that worked out really nice, actually. What I was trying to avoid is with the center piece is. You can see these little gaps. It's not like perfectly round where it's tight around here and then it does warp a little bit. So that's what I was trying to avoid, but I think um, it was just causing it to bind up. So the, the difference really is negligible. It's really not that, that much of a difference. This one does have a little bit of a bigger flare than the other one. Yeah, and I forgot to measure. You can see there, this one's a little bit bigger, but it worked out pretty well. Yeah, look how much bigger that one is. I didn't measure the final length on this one before I pressed it, so that's kind of where I messed up there, but. All right, so I spun that flare down a little bit on the lathe, and now they match. Matchy matchy, all good. And here's what I ended up with. So I got six nicely made velocity stacks. And I know that there's other ways to do this and there's multiple different variations of methods, but this is kind of what I chose and ended up with. And I guess at the end of it, I wanted to end up with a tool that I could use to make more of them if I needed to. This was kind of the idea in my head and sometimes it's not always about being the cheapest or the fastest or most efficient. It's more about getting an idea that's in your head, out of your head and enjoying it while you're doing it and being proud of the end result of something that you make, you know? And I'm happy with these. They think they turned out pretty cool. I did learn a little bit along the way about the annealing stuff and bending aluminum. And this mini lathe is a gangster. It just keeps on working. I mean, it's not the most precise thing in the world and it does chatter a little bit sometimes. And the one of the other methods of doing the velocity stack is like what Kelvin did on the Nivlac 57 YouTube channel. Basically holding a rod down here and then using a screwdriver or something to bend it out. And I tried doing that with this and it didn't bend the aluminum at all. And this thing isn't very strong. Uh, while it's spinning, I could probably actually stop it by, my, by hand. And then sometimes even cutting material, I'll slow this thing down a lot. So there's a job that like needs a lot of force. It's not very good for that. So that method didn't really work for this. So this was the solution. 
So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Like, comment, subscribe, share the build. I think this thing is going to be pretty fun once we get... Well, what am I talking about? It's already fun.